Hello everyone, Jennifer Russell here from Building Wings Studio and welcome to episode number two of the Building Wings series. Today I want to share with you um, another tutorial as well as a little bit behind my process and where I get my inspiration from. So I have a little secret, a little confession. I love crystals. I collect them. Um, I love the moon. I often pay attention to the phases and the astrological sign that it's in and um, those things help me to gain clarity and inspiration and um, a way to maybe tune into things that I might not have been aware of before, a way to check in with different parts of myself and gain new perspective maybe on something I wasn't thinking of before. I also practice Reiki. Yusui Reiki as well as Celtic Reiki. I um, love to be in the forest. I love to be out in nature. You might catch me if I was out by myself um, touching trees, hugging trees, talking to different things. Uh, I go out there with my journals and I sit and I write. I could be lost in there for hours just playing around with paints and words and just having that quiet time with myself without distractions. So that being said, now that that's out there, Sunday, February 9th was the full moon and the full moon was in the astrological sign of Leo. And the full moon is, if you, if you want to know a little bit about the phases, if you don't already, uh, the full moon is a time where it's a climax in the month. It's a time when things are coming to fruition, things have um, expanded to their fullest and it's um, a blossoming. It's time to put the finishing touches on and, and celebrate what you've done throughout the month. And um, one thing that's kind of neat is Artemis, the Greek goddess of the moon, uh, people would bring her um, a birthday cake because she had a monthly birthday and that's where the birthday cake came from and people would put candles on it um, so that it would light up like the moon and offer that um, to the goddess Artemis. So that's where birthday cakes came from if you uh, hadn't heard that before that was kind of neat um, so yeah the full moon is about uh, fulfillment and honoring that and then it being in the sign of Leo it brings another aspect to it now it's interesting um, because until about five years ago I had never thought about the moon moving through the astrological signs Usually we focus on our sun signs, like my sun sign is Leo. So when I was born, the sun was in the sign of Leo, which is there for a few weeks. Uh, but the moon, it, it's um, orbiting so fast that it's only in these signs for just a couple of days before it's on to the next. So this month, the full moon is in Leo. And Leo is a time to explore your creativity and your self-expression, what you're bringing into the world. and your inner child. So Leo in the full moon is about um, expressing yourself, celebrating that expression. Because it's the full moon, we want to celebrate the expression and creativity we've brought into our life. Or maybe you have been thinking about uh, adding creativity in your life or wanting to do more creativity. So now would be a good time to uh, take that action and, and do that to celebrate the full moon. Uh, Leo is also about following your dreams and bringing excitement and pleasure into your life. So taking some time to journal about what things you can do to bring more of that in. What are the things you like to do? Leo also likes to be um, appreciated and noticed. So one thing you could do is give appreciation to others. So going out and maybe doing something kind for a friend, maybe taking them to lunch or even sending them a little message of appreciation about uh, what they mean to you. It could be something special for you to, to do, do for you to do during this time. Let's see some questions that you can ask yourself or one question that you might want to journal about is what have you been putting off that you have always wanted to do? So take some time to journal about that and find maybe one big thing, one thing that you've always wanted to do that you've never done. And then just imagine into the future what that could look like if you did that or accomplished that. Then go backwards and I want you to think of actions you can take that you would need to do to get yourself there. 
And I want you to pick one of those actions and try it and see how that feels. So now that you know a little bit more about the moon and Leo and how I use those to inspire my creative practice sometimes, I want to leave you with this image right here, which is going to be coming up right after this. And you'll see the video of how I created this. Now I've created a lion here for Leo, which was special to me. Not only it was the moon in Leo, but it's also my birth sign, sun sign. And he's holding a key right here. And now that he's all on here, I'm going to take some time to journal and write about him. So for this piece, I used a, just a composition notebook. And I put, I did some journaling and then added some black gesso over the page. After that, I used pastels and pens. They were gel pens, moon gel pens, so they go on the black. And this is done with gold leaf. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the moon and Leo. Until next time, be inspired. Here is a list of supplies that I used for this project, but please feel free to use what you have on hand. Start by setting up your space. Make it somewhere cozy, a place you want to be. Maybe light a candle, get some snacks or a warm drink. Make it a place you want to be. Let's start with some journaling and set up our intention for today's piece. If you're following along with the full moon, maybe your question is, what have you been putting off that you have always wanted to do? And maybe asking why or how you can move forward with that. Next, we're going to put our question into the mystery. So I'm covering mine up with black gesso. That'll make it fun to play with the, the gel pens and the pastels a little later to pop them off the page. You could also use a white gesso. Gesso is a material that's used for priming a canvas and it makes it uh, good for putting other mediums on top of it. If you're using white paint to cover your journaling, you might find that it's, um, if, if you're writing on top of it, depending on what you're using, it might not stay on as well or it might not write on it as well, but it can still be done. I'm using gel pens and Jane Davenport's Power Pastels, which Baron will so graciously show off here in a moment. He knows just where to go. Uh, I really like her Power Pastels because they are like a cross between a crayon and a pastel. They cover really nicely and she has some really vibrant colors. Here comes the line for Leo. I'm sketching them out with gel pens. I haven't sketched it out first or done any practices. I'm just looking at a reference photo and kind of just figuring out where those pieces are going to be. I like to start with the nose and then build, build out from there from the muzzle which then connects into the eyes. I'll put a link to the reference that I used below. It's on one of my Pinterest boards. So from there I'm just roughly sketching in the outline of the face, the shape. It's almost like a teardrop a reverse teardrop. I felt called to put the symbol of a key in my lion's mouth. Is your lion carrying anything? Is it wearing anything? Does it want to be adorned with anything? For me, as the key came up, uh, I was asking myself, what door does it unlock? What message does it carry? And that answer may not even come until the end of the process when I take some time to journal. But the symbol's there and it's something for me to explore. What symbols are coming up for you? And what do those mean for you? And what do they mean in reference to your lion? Now I'm going back and forth between gel pens and pastels. I'm using the bright colors in the eye and also on the highlights when I look at my reference and I'm using the darker colors like purples and blues for the shadows on the, on the face. And I go back and forth. 
So I'm putting down the gel pens and then I'm coming over it with the pastels to help blend it together. And now it becomes a dance of lights and darks, um, line work, where you're going to put things, what colors are going to go where, what do you want to bring forward, what do you want to push back. Anything that you use dark with will push it back and anything that you put light on will bring forward. When you're going through a process like this, it can be very scary and intimidating. There's a, Sometimes we have a fear that we want to get it right, but that's not what it's about. Right now it's just about being curious, being open to what happens. Whether your line looks exactly like the picture or the way that you envisioned in your mind is not the goal. What we want to do is just get what's in our hearts out and maybe get some new insight about what we're asking. Some of my most favorite pieces are the ones that I started having no idea how they would turn out. They were the ones that when I was working on them, I didn't care as much, so I was just being playful instead of being protective of them. This is one of those pieces. The mane was something that I wasn't quite sure how I was going to pull it off. So I start with some really loose scribbly work, pulling it out from the sides using orange and yellow pen. And I'm looking at my reference to see which way the fur or the hair is flowing. I had a tendency to make it want to come like straight out from his face, but that wasn't how the hair actually flowed in the picture. So if you're looking at the reference, you'll see which way the hair flows. If you're using mine as your reference, you'll see that the hair comes out from the top, but then begins to flow around and under the face. Same thing with the other areas of the face. I looked at the patterns on the fur. So on the nose where the blue is, you'll see that the, the fur kind of comes in towards each other, but then higher up the fur starts to go in little dashes up his nose, up the bridge of his nose, and up into his forehead, where the fur again changes pattern. So now we go back to the dance of shadows and lights and colors. I've outlined the eyes a little bit with black. I put a little bit of highlight on top with white. I'm using orange and yellows in the mane, purples to bring out shadows yellows and oranges in the main, but I felt it wasn't matching the rest of the face so then I came in with some pinks, some whites and purples, and you can see the flow of the hair coming out and the weight of it pulling it down and coming underneath his face. Baron wants me to take a little time to sit back and look at what we've done so far. Now I'm adding some gold leaf. My gold leaf is old and crushed up and I've just used a glue stick to, to put it on in the areas that I'd like and then I'm brushing it off. Then some that have fallen around, I mush in with my finger and it adheres with the pastel that's been laid down. You could also use gold paint for this or any color that you'd like for your key. And that wraps up this project. You can ask if your lion wants anything else added, any final details or highlights. And when you're finished, take some time to go back to your original question and then ask what is your line telling you? Were there symbols that you added? Does his expression tell you something? Is he asking you to take an action? What message does he have or what answer does your creation have for you that you didn't have in the beginning? So I hope you enjoyed this process. 
And until next time, be inspired.